So we're going to go through and highlight some of the provisions of the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act. One thing I think, I, at least I caught my eye as I went through the conference report, is perhaps one of the most common phrases in here is that the conference agreement did not pick up a particular provision of the House bill. So there was quite a bit in the, in the House bill that is not included in this conference agreement. As is often the case with legislation in Congress, it's harder to get things through the Senate, so the Senate view of things tend to prevail a little in these things, and that indeed appears to have happened here. A lot of the provisions that were in the House bill have not made it into the final version, and we will highlight some of the more significant ones of that just because they had been talked about so much. It's also important to note what finally did get in the bill. And then we will also discuss some planning ideas around the new act, particularly there's something that people can be doing before year end. Some of them are getting quite a bit of attention. Time is starting to run out, but we still have a couple of weeks here to talk to people about what they can do in spite of the holidays being upon us. First off, the individual rates, somewhat similar to the Senate proposal in terms of the fact that they picked up seven rate brackets instead of the three or four being proposed by the House. The brackets are similar to what was in the Senate proposal, but there are some changes. The top bracket, instead of being 38.5%, has been lowered to 37%. So the top bracket goes down from 396 to 37%. That was in part done to help appease certain senators who were concerned that the pass-through provisions that we uh, will talk about weren't as generous as they could have been, and so to help compensate for the fact that the pass-through provisions might not have been as generous as they had hoped, they compromised and lowered the top rate to help it in another way. Another change that reflected on this slide is in the Senate proposal, the 35% bracket for joint filers went up to $1 million, double that for single filers, and the 37% bracket kicked in at $1 million. Now in this revised version of the law, it kicks in at $600,000, not that much more than the single bracket. So there is still a significant marriage penalty in this legislation. You can see here through the 24% bracket and the 32% bracket, there is basically no marriage penalty, but now there is a marriage penalty at, at the top end of the rate structure. Another thing I want to point out is that most of the individual provisions that we're going to be talking about, as well as the pass-through provisions, expire at the end of 2025. This is a budgeting technique that we've become somewhat familiar with. It was done with the Bush tax cuts back in 2001 and 2003, where everything expired after 10 years to stay within the budget reconciliation restraints, which prohibit any projected deficit beyond the 10-year point. So that's been one of the criticisms of this legislation, that the corporate provisions are permanent while the individual provisions expire at the end of, after 2025. When the Democrats talk about the adverse provisions of this bill, they're often citing to the effect on individuals after 2025 from this bill. Of course, Congress hopes that some future Congress will get around to extending these provisions before 2026 gets here. As we saw with the Bush tax cuts, sometimes that happens and sometimes it doesn't. After 10 years, we saw the restoration of the 39.6% rate under Obama. We also saw that the estate tax ended up only being repealed for one year and then returned. So sometimes these things do expire, even though Congress hopes that they will not end up expiring. While the individual rates for most people will have gone down somewhat, there is the possibility that the top rate will not go down for everyone. There could still be a few people who don't find that at least at the top end of their rate, they're at the same or a higher rate than before but they will get the advantage of the lower taxes and the lower income in their bracket. So everyone, most everyone should see at least some tax cut from the rates alone. 